Hi everybody, Tim Hughes here. I'm the CEO and co-founder of DLA Ignite. With me today we've got Martin Barnes and we're going to be talking about pitching. And for some of us, it's a, it's a really, really scary thing. So we're going to talk about not going from zero to 100. We're going to talk about going from zero to one. Um, before we get into it and we talk about pitching and, and um, um, how we can actually align ourselves to, to pitch, Martin, um, explain pe to people where they can get hold of you. So the best place to get hold of me is on LinkedIn, Tim. It is the only place I have time in social media. And if you want to find me, I'm Martin Barnes. And if you want to clarify which Martin Barnes, I'm the only one that wrestles crocodiles. So I yeah. have that in my profile. Right. Come yeah, and, and we will get you on another time to talk about crocodile wrestling at some point. Excellent. <laughs> Uh, so, Martin, um, give us a give us a, a very short um, history of, of 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 how you got here because it's it's actually quite complex, isn't it? I think, like most people, after twenty two years of work, you've done a bit of everything. And in mega brief, I did four years in London as a graphic designer. Then I went to China for a two year contract that turned into sixteen years. And then 2019, we come back for one month to celebrate Christmas with the family, bring the kids back, have their birthdays. And then we hit 2020 and we're still in the UK. I don't need to explain why. And now I'm in the UK coming out of Taunton in Somerset and just trying to connect and help as many people start enjoying pitching. Because pitching is a scare. I'm, I'm an introvert. Um, and there's nothing, uh, you know, I hate more than standing up in front of people and talking. Um, and I, I, how I ended up uh, running a podcast, I don't know. Maybe it was actually to the, the reason why I'm here is actually to get over the fear of doing it and and, and video. Um, so, um, so if 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 we, you know, most people haven't ever pitched, mm -hmm. and most people are, and, and and it's you know we would rather do something else like eat our own arm or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and so was it, how can people get started and, and, and how can you get to the point where you actually start feeling comfortable, um, well, not just talking to people, but talking to multiple people? It's such a common challenge. And I'm sort of sometimes incredibly introverted and I just want to sort of be by myself and recharge. And then sometimes I love the center of attention and it's a pendulum that swings. And I think for people who, who are sort of going sort of overthinking it, um, a sort of recent revelation was reading Peter Thiel's book, Zero to One. Yeah. And I love that. Right. I, as soon as I finished reading it, I went back to the beginning and I didn't really read it. I listened to it. But as a first listen, I finished it and I just started listening to it again. Hmm. And I just loved the idea of that zero to one being the hardest thing you can possibly do. Like one to a hundred is where you've got momentum. And so I was thinking, how can I take that for what I do? And then maybe even take a few steps further back and say, what is zero to 0 0.001 or zero one? And not to get too sort of mathematical, but just the idea of how do we break it down into such a simple, small, manageable task? And once you stack enough of those small challenges, you've then made progress. Yeah. And, and so it's basically how can we do that in pitching where you don't compare yourself to Steve Jobs or a TED speaker or, yeah. uh, you know, somebody incredibly charismatic and who just eats up the spotlight. But how can you sort of say, well, I'm me and my goals are different, but I am not going to not achieve my goals because of what I'm telling myself in my head. Because we all, there's always that uh, people go, oh yeah, you need to watch this so-and-so TED talk. Mm -hmm. And you watch it and you go, I could never be like that. Yeah. How on earth did they come up with that? Um, with that, and I, I can. And immediately you go, well, I'm not going to do this. And we almost do that on purpose. We almost sort of go, right? I need to go and get inspiration from the best. Hmm. And then I'm going to. And then I. And then I have. I. I have a get out clause where I can be like, well, I'm never going to be as good as them. So why don't I just stay in my current comfort zone? And it's natural to get inspired and to to be, you know, to go and find heroes and inspiration and to take that. But if that's your measure and your baseline, then you're really just setting yourself up to, I wouldn't say fail, just to not achieve. 
And therefore, the cost of not doing it suddenly starts to compound in a really negative way. Uh, Patrick says something uh, really good, which is, Martin, overthinking is the key. Just embrace positive risk like eating or breathing. Well, I read that right. It exactly. is just a conversation. Exactly. Exactly, Patrick. Thank you so much. It is like the biggest pitch we face is the one in our heads to that inner critic. Because their voice is the loudest and we carry them around 24-7. And they're constantly going, you said that wrong. You did that wrong. You haven't brushed your hair. You look a bit scruffy. You haven't shaved. They, they're constantly like nagging us and we listen to them. And when we can pitch to that person in our head and tell them to sit down and zip it because you're getting in my way, <laughs> then it starts to get in. And then you start to get a bit of momentum and a bit of flow. And then you start making very intentional decisions about your environment and your context and then you suddenly realize oh the chains are falling away and i can actually do this and i've seen it in so many different types of people so what do you need to do to get started because you run pitch clubs and stuff where uh, and and you you know you where people can come on obviously make fools of themselves um so so what is it that you need to do to get started you, it's a bit like learning to eat healthy or learn a language or, you know, get back in the just, gym. Just put it off as long as you can then. Yeah, just tell yourself it's never going to work. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's like any habit shift, any transformation is just sort of saying, right, I'm going to do it. And there will be some resistance and it will feel a little bit of friction at the beginning. But that is nothing compared to, again, the cost of not doing it. Um, and mentally you have to connect your head to your body and then you have to just put yourself in a situation where there are stakes but no risk and so you feel it and that you know that you're in a community with other people who are in the same situation who are essentially applauding you and willing you to do as best you can mm. and when you when you suddenly realize that that's the situation and not what the person in your head was telling you then you're kind of like, oh, that was easy. Or it was, no, I'm not going to say that was easy. I'm going to say it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. Yes. It's the psychological safety of the fact that we're all, we're all willing you to, to, to do good because we know that we're probably going to be crapper than you anyway. Yeah, exactly. And everybody who's in the audience actually wants to be where you are. Hmm. There's a fantastic Seth Godin quote, and I really cannot remember of all the hundreds of books and podcasts and bits of content he's, he's shared. He basically said, you want to be the person on stage because then you're one to a multiple, 10, 50, 100, 1,000. And do anything you can to be on stage because then you're amplifying your message. If you're in the audience, you're lost in this in a crowd. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's super powerful. And so I have this sort of mantra of like, never say, never say no to the stage. Yep. If somebody says, would you like to present? They obviously believe you have the skills yep. and their reputation is at stake and they wouldn't put you on stage if they thought you were going to fail. Mm -hmm. So they believe in you and take that energy and, and, and step off it to find your own momentum. So you, you talked about... Um that the first pitch was probably something like 65,000 years ago. Yes. Yeah. So I have this wonderful story I tell myself because I'm not an archaeologist or a, or a scientist or a historian, but I see those cave paintings. And to me, they're the world's first ever pitch. And they exist for a reason. Somebody crawled into that cave and created that because they wanted to communicate an idea to somebody else. And they must have gone and gathered the rest of the nomadic tribe, pulled them in, organized them, quietened them down and told them a story that captivated their imagination and used those visuals to help transfer the idea from their head to the, head of the, the heads of the community. Now, is that right or wrong? I have no idea. But it has to be somewhere related to that, because why would you do it otherwise? unless it's literally like I have artistic expression that I need to, to release. So to me, we've been using slides forever. At the moment, in our current iteration, they are in software. 
and they come in a sequence and you can add images and pictures and formatting and animations and all that sort of stuff. Back where it started, they were on a wall, but I imagine they moved a fire across the cave wall to illuminate different elements. So a story. Yeah. But visual storytelling and the, and the atmosphere and the mood and the, the lighting from the fires and, and the imagination of the people and the experiences and all those common things came together. And, you know, we're doing it right now. It's through the luxury of the internet and whether, you know, before the pandemic, we all used to get in a room together and do it. And so it's, it's in this constant evolution. And I think that's one of the timeless, and that's why we should all do it because it's in our DNA. And if we don't do it, we're not contributing to the fact that we're all spinning on this rock flying through space. I mean, we're getting whoa right now, but we have, we have. I think that we, I think that we actually have, well, when I was at, I think we kind of had it beaten out of us at some point because we, at some point we moved to this way of writing where you say, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a results oriented, results orientated, tenacious, um, highly energetic, you know, which, which is utter rubbish. Whereas actually, we all—if you talk to anybody—I believe that everybody has a story, uh, uh, and it's and 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 once you get it out of them, you, we go, oh wow, that isn't it? But, wow, you lived in China for sixteen years, because and we actually had a conversation. I was immediately straight in. God, oh, what was it like? Was did it, you know? Because I've been to China a couple of times, it's like, and immediately you know, we spent 10, 15 minutes talking about you being in China because for me that was fascinating. Um, and there was a, you know, you there's a whole there's in, and and you you told a whole story about it. We don't have time to go into that because that's not what today's about. But um, by the way, if you ever get to talk to Martin, ask him about it. <laughs> yes. um, and and it and it and it is fascinating because there is that story. And so my point being is it how is it that we're how do we pull that story out of people to get them to relax and breathe and say, well, actually, I was in China for sixteen years and. Exactly. Yeah, it's 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 allowing it's it's recognizing that every 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 piece of communication is a stage, and so we're on a digital stage right now. Yeah. You know, my stage right now is actually my kid's bedroom because it's the only place that has a nice, simple wall. Yeah. Um, and whether we're sharing a story one on one, one on ten, one on fifty, one on a hundred, there are all these moments where, like, we don't need information. There's a wonderful expression in a book by Dan and Chip Heath called TBU. And the acronym stands for true but useless. And it basically means that people get attached to the stuff that is technically correct, but in this current moment and context doesn't really add to achieving the common goals. Mm -hmm. And so we can get stuck in really technical uh, rabbit holes. And now more than ever, right? Um, and so to sort of realize that, okay, I'm actually talking to you and there is something that I don't need to start at the beginning chronologically because we don't have time. I need to get to the meat fast because we have these amazing pocket computers that can distract us in a second. Yeah, and they do. Oh, my goodness. But we we have to tell the, the why and the how and the who and the what and the where of why we're here right now, and that's our story. So... So you went through previously, there was five points to get started. Um, do you wanna do you wanna rattle through those? Do yeah. wanna, or shall I remind you what they are? You remind them of me. <laughs> okay, right. Uh five points. Uh first pitches are in your head. Yeah. So it's that idea that you're gonna you're gonna have to pitch yourself. You, you see people with huge amounts of confidence because they're constantly telling themselves they can do this. That doesn't mean that they ever doubt themselves, but the voice of confidence is louder than the voice of doubt. And you have to believe in yourself and you have to know that failure is okay. And this all sounds like cliches right now. It sounds like I'm just reading a stream of motivational quotes, but every cliche is true because it is a universal truth. And we just have to take it, mold it, and give it our own shape and form. And then it gives us power. It stops being... Uh, you know, really generic and starts being really individual. Realisation is in your DNA. Yes. 
because we've been listening to stories as kids and I watch my children, five-year-old twins run around right now. They're making up games. They're telling each other the rules. They were playing with their friend tag. And then all of a sudden you can't tag me because my feet are off the ground and you can't tag me because I made the game up. And they're just like spontaneously creating stories about the game. And if we assess them, they're not very good stories when we're looking at them through adult eyes, but as kids, they, they fuel the hours they have together to play. And so we forget that and we should revisit that and know that stories aren't that complicated and that we have been telling them since the caves and we've been listening to them since we were kids. We just need to get the basic Lego blocks back mm -hmm. and then start to play with them. OK, number three is how to get started. It's just to find a space where you do not feel the pressure, but you feel the stakes. And so Pitch Club, which we've mentioned, is a weekly event that I host where people can come and pitch and give a three-minute pitch. There are five three-minute pitches. We have an audience of normally around 14, 15 people, which means you have 14 or 15 people giving an hour of their time. Mm -hmm. So there is an audience and there's stakes, but there are no investors or managers or bosses that are going to give you you know, a bad appraisal or remove your promotion. So you're not going to lose anything by not doing as good as you think. Yeah. But you're going to benefit because you're going to feel it. Yeah, and, and and often the worst pitch or the, the most scary pitch is doing one internally um, because the one internally might not make mean that you lose the business, but it could mean that you lose your job. Exactly, exactly. Because that internal audience is super familiar with you and they're bringing all that history with them. So they're there. So number four is core structure. You've got to follow a path because every story has this three act play, whether it's a Chinese story, an Arabic story, a Western story, whatever culture it comes from. And if you just jump in, it's a bit like telling a joke. If you're in a crowd of friends, you start telling a joke and you realize you don't, you've lost what? Uh, and everyone's like, oh, that was rubbish. So you do need to follow a certain pattern and you need to have momentum and you need to hit certain beats. But it's so learnable because it has gone through time, through every age of man or woman, you know, civilization. So we can follow the structure. We just need to, to sort of see it, play with it, learn it, break it, and then use it. So we... we and, I, and I guess, and, and number five is practice. And I guess your pitch club is a great... I'm, I'm, I'm assuming people can come and listen. 100%. So anybody can come. It's a completely ground floor event. The doors are wide open. Mm -hmm. Anybody can pitch. And we've had... Um, or listen. Or just listen. We have people who just sit listening and give a little bit of feedback. Mm -hmm. And so we have four rounds of feedback per pitch. So you get a lot of... You can absorb a lot by watching people demonstrate. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of people and we celebrate your streak, your consistency... So we have someone who's on 30 pitches, someone who's on 28, someone who's on 14, and they are literally coming and chipping away at their performance. And some people are really working on what they say. Some people are really working on how they say it. Yeah. And we've seen people come up and, and like really choke at the beginning, like not even get through it and almost disappear. And then eight pitches later, you're like, you're a different person. Hmm. It's practice. It's amazing. Hmm. I guess it's a bit like um, for those in the UK, Strictly Come Dancing, which is where you get, you know, these celebrities at the beginning who um, have got two left feet and, um, and, and, cut, and then the ones that get through as they get to the final, they're, they're dancing like the professionals. And it's just down to practice. Working, um, I learned this recently. I hope we've got time for it. I'm going to squeeze it in. Uh, it is the zone of proximal development. Yeah. educational parlance for you do better in the company of people just a little bit ahead of you yes and so young kids play better with older kids because they learn so in pitching and dancing if you're working with someone who's a little bit better than you then you you, you raise your game and you do that in a really supportive scaffolded way where you're not exposed, but you're insulated and you rise up together. It's, it's, it's really amazing to see because you, you go, everybody can do this. Everyone can start that journey from zero to one. I remember when I, I remember in my teens, I used to play badminton and um, playing against the adults yeah. uh, and losing 
I suddenly I, I didn't like it to begin with. And then I realized I actually learned more by why did he why did he play that? Oh, you know, and, 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 and then re, and, and actually my game got better yeah. by losing. Yeah, yeah. I, there were so many times I wish I could go back to those teenage years and go, this is the really important bit. Don't let your ego get in the way. Yeah, I'm there. <laughs> so, um, uh, so you have a book out as well, don't you? Which is the A to Z of pitching. Yep, here is. How can people get that? I actually have one or two physical copies made. So this yeah. is what it looks like inside. I've, I've read it. Yeah, and yeah. I have a, uh, a digital version, ebook and Kindle, and it's on Gumroad. Right. Yeah. So we have actually a promotion. We talked about doing a promotion. So I have some copies we did. that we can give away to your audience. So if we, let's say we give three copies to, yeah. what, should we, what should we ask people to do, Tim? What can be our... Oh, I, I don't know. We haven't prepared this. Why don't someone who uh, comment, takes a screenshot of right now or some yeah. sort of evidence of right now, puts it into LinkedIn and then tags you and me. Yeah. If three people do that, I'll send them, I'll send them a link to the book and they can get it for free. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, promote it's a, a nice gift up to Christmas. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, yeah. A, um, the the A to Z, it's it's the um, pitching A to Z, isn't it? Yeah. So basically, I wanted to write a book, but I was quite daunted by the thought of writing a, a sort of what we consider a book on a shelf. So I decided to go and use two of my superpowers, which is sketching and pitching. Yeah. Each, and I and I wanted a structure to follow. We were talking about structure, so I was like. A to Z, I have to come up with 26 insights. And then people, when they're reading it, they know where they are. And I've got the pitching A to Z, I'm doing public speaking A to Z, slide design A to Z, and sketching A to Z. So it'll be a quadrilogy of books. A and, quadrilogy, that's that's amazing. Yeah, and, and basically get from zero to one. Like just get that initial mindset shift from a very quick book to read to get you in the spotlight, and then you'll be off to the whole off to the race. so um so martin thank you so much for coming on today uh, remind people where they can get hold of you all on linkedin 100 percent linkedin so martin barnes startup pitch coach crocodile wrestler is my handle and please come and say hello it is the only you're better off talking to me on linkedin than email and i post twice a day and i just like to share sketches and pitching tips and really like to meet people on linkedin because it's where we have our professional lenses so yeah, come and up. remind people where they can how they can get your book by um, so, um, screenshot, um, tagging you and me. Yeah, so take a, take a screenshot right now, and then paste that into LinkedIn, and then you at Martin Barnes at Tim Hughes. We'll see it, and then I will connect. We'll connect. Make sure we're all connected, and then um, I will send you a link to my book, absolutely free. Excellent. Martin, thank you so much for coming on, especially um, as it's only um, a couple of days before Christmas. Um, it's been great. And, um, and wish you and your family a, um, a happy Christmas. Excellent. And thank you. Likewise, have a fantastic festive season. Thank you. And uh, see you in the feed. Thanks, Martin. See you soon.